So I would like to call next panelist Anmol Loya ji for his presentation on the topic related to the Power BI and Python in uh, useful for the purpose of financial analysis. So how the Power BI and Python can help a chartered accountant in their day-to-day -day working relating to the financial analysis report generation. So over to you Anmol Loya ji. Your voice is not audible. I hope it's audible now. Yes, yes, now audible. All right. So very good evening to all the panelists and the guests who are attending this event. Uh, my name is Anmol Loya. I'm a chartered accountant based out of Bangalore and I work as a business intelligence developer. Now I get a lot of requests with respect to financial statements. There are a lot of investors who get a lot of financial statements from the companies they've invested in and it's very difficult for them to sometimes analyze it. Sometimes the companies give them scanned copies or images of their financial statements. Bankers have approached me that they are not able to perform credit analytics very quickly because of the same reason that the financial statements are not in proper format. They are probably scanned images, etc, etc. So I also, uh, you know, uh, do a lot of MIS automations where I have required different, different financial statement formats to be converted into a standard format using rule based approach. But that's a thing of past, right? Now, I would like to welcome you to how the future of analytics looks like, right? So today, what we are going to do is, we are going to convert some unstructured data to structured data, right? How is this going to work? Now, I'm going to present an image of a financial statement. Look at this. These are images. This was a balance sheet. This is an income statement. And you we have all seen such kind of uh, financial statements in front of us. And we have to manually work on it and create financial statements in a standard format to process it further. Let's automate this process such that if we have financial statements, which are scanned images of six different companies also, we can come to something like this, which I'm presenting right now. This is the structured format of the data, right? Now, what is the process which I'm going to follow for this? Let's understand. So how am I going to do it? First, we are going to extract the data from the scanned PDF financials or scanned images of financials using optical character recognition. Next, I have integrated OpenAI and DeepSeq APIs into Python, right? Once the data is extracted by Python, it calls OpenAI API or DeepSeq API and then the financial statements are created by the AI itself. So till here, let us complete the process and then we'll move forward into understanding further about it, right? By the way, this is the uh, Python which I've generated. I'm not moving up because the API keys are on top, but this is a prompt which I've given in the Python code and so on and so forth. We are going to run this code. So now let me tell you the structure of how this code is going to be run. I have input files 
F Limited. Now, this is the financial statement, which is a scanned PDF of F Limited. Okay, and I have output folder here where there is where uh, currently we don't have anything, right? If I click on this run.exe, which is created using Python, I'll just whatever files are there in the input, all of them get extracted, converted into financial statements, and exported in an Excel format in the output folder. So let's have a look. I'm going to click on run.exe. And now, let it work. F Limited has two pages. It's extracted the text. Now it's calling the ChatGPT API. Once it calls the ChatGPT API, we have to wait for a couple of minutes. The APIs can be a little slow sometimes. Probably a minute more. You know, till it is extracting, I will explain you what API is. Okay. Yeah, it is it has been extracted now. So in the output folder, now you see I have an Excel file which is generated, F limited. Right. Now let's get inside this Excel and just see quickly what is generated. Now every time I get a different output at times, because you know, I have the balance sheet, I have the PL, and I have the cash flow statement. Right. Just have a look at I have purposely kept the numbers in a text format here because it just gets extracted better. The zeros are handled better with that manner. So this is the uh, profit and loss statement which is extracted. Let's close this. Right. Now similarly what I have done is I have created one folder which has all the files. Basically all the scanned financials. Right. These I have six scanned financials which I had here. And what I have done is all of them have been in, uh, you know, exported into Excel earlier so that we don't waste time in the, uh, uh, you know, today because we have limited time. So all of this is here, right here, right? Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open up Power Query. Just give me a second. Okay, now this is Power BI's backend, Power Query, okay? What I have done here is, I have uh, again integrated the API of DeepSeek here using mQuery in the advanced editor. I'm again not going to open it because of the API key issues. Now, I've imported A Limited and B Limited's financials here. I've just imported a part of it, not the entire thing, so that we can do it faster. Now, if you see the B Limited's financials, uh, we have just the income statement here. We have total sales here. Okay, and then cost of sales, gross margin, etc. etc. I have also created a standardized PL for myself here in the standard list. In the standard list, we have revenue. Whereas in B Limited, if you saw, let me just move it up. Okay. In B Limited, we have sales, whereas standard list is revenue. Under a normal scenario, we would have had to manually map the total sales with the revenue right or we would have created a rule but how many rules will you create right so what you can do here is i can map the standard list right here in this financial statements of b limited let's see how i'll go to add column i'll invoke a custom function and let's name it as mapping and the function is mapped to standard financial statements which is right here if you see and map name, that is what is the column name which you want to map with the standard financial statements is account title, which is right. Once I press OK, if you have a look at what has happened, total sales has been mapped with the revenue of the standard list. This is the standard list. One second. Then cost of sales. If I go to the standard list, there is nothing cost of sales here. So when something cannot be mapped, I have specifically called it out that it is unmapped, right? And then gross margin has been mapped as gross profit, operating cost as operating expenses, interest and taxes has been unmapped because it is not a part of the same line item in my standard list and final profit net income. So if you realize my manual effort is there, but it is significantly reducing. Now, how much manual effort is reducing? You cannot define a percentage because it depends on the kind of financial statements, right? 
and then once you do all of these things right you can get an income statement last two minutes sure once you do the entire thing you can have a standard set of income statement items and you can import data from a limited b limited c limited and so on and so forth this is just an extract of the data that's it right so this is how this entire process works let me go ahead and complete this hold on so we have seen the presentation till here where the python extracts the financial statements and gives an excel and then we move and load the data into power query in power bi and then the power bi has the ability to reclassify the financial statements based on a standard fs and that is powered by ai or the api integration into power bi now why is it useful right of course mis automation being one of the most primary reasons of a, a part of it was used for that you want to make projections or you want to do credit analysis and much more right just very quickly i also want to show you how the api keys are generated this is the open ai platform i have generated an uh, api called as unmol in the deepseek platform i have generated again api keys for power bi and python and the usage also can be tracked here i'm not getting into the usage right now uh, because all the cost related to it everything is going to be there and um, just quickly one interesting thing here okay um so i have done some sentiment analysis so whenever there's a product review let's say if on amazon there is a product review like let's say somebody says i love this product unless and until i read it i don't know whether it is positive or negative of course they will have five ratings one rating etc but just on the basis of text if you want to find out whether the sentiment is positive or negative i have again done this using deep seek right i love this product it's a positive sentiment i have also gone ahead and written something peculiar like the service was terrible and being sarcastic i wrote thank you so much for wasting my money so i was seeing whether ai can read it so it read it right and gave me negative if it, it was rule based that if somebody writes thank you you should give positive that's not happening here right so it's a very interesting time we are in currently um ai currently of course the api works a little slowly right now and it's um but i think the future belongs to ai and the analytics uh part of it is very exciting for me at least and that's it from my end and over to you um the jury thank you very much anmol uh, this is a wonderful use case i have one query in this uh, process that you have used the power uh, power bi and apis of the chat gpt that is open ai as well as deep seek apis for the processing of the data you are taking the data from the pdf file and extracting the data through these apis and converting into the excel files but sometimes uh, what happens when we are trying to extracting the data through pdf files using the ocr technology by open ai or all other uh, platform like deep seek so sometimes it happens that it doesn't understand the entire data it provide you the result a partial result it provide you the incomplete result so how you ha can handle this okay so uh, himanshu ji i think we need to understand that who needs to do the heavy lifting now ocr technology can be handled easily by tesseract and python and we can use a pdf enhancer in uh, you know the image enhancer in python so what i have done is i have made i have made python's tesseract and pdf enhancer and image enhancer to do the heavy lifting of ocr and then i've used AC, uh, i've used open ai to go and check whether everything is right so that's how i have handled my use case okay thank you very much uh, anmol for this uh, wonderful presentation and use case for the purpose of understanding the process of using the power bi and python for our day to day business practice though it is a little bit typical and little bit technical use case for using by every member but the member who is well versed with the or who is interested to learn these new things can be take your use case for uh, 
day to day practices thank you very much imanchu small disclaimer imanchu i have a question yeah please go yeah ahead. please yeah so amol could you please explain how difficult for chartered accountant like us to you know configure any api you know api amol jam chartered accountant like you can probably do it very quickly but chartered right, accountant right. like me who does not know coding see i know very basics of python and very basics of m query uh, so when i used open ai it was very difficult but um, deep seek was you know a game changer here the kind of codes which were generated were very very uh, you know they were actually pretty good they were actually 90% on point of course you, we had to i had to go through two days of continuous prompting to actually get to that 90% even and uh, then you know a lot of google search and taking help from my friends on linkedin uh, you know they gave me a little bit tweaks in the code in m query uh, so python was not that difficult but in power in power query when i had to import it i had to take a little bit of help a little bit you know that last mile the last 2 3% um to get it perfect right so it was you know it was complete two and a half days of work you know which i have put in uh, to build the base i mean this was not done right now not this immediate two, two and a half days It was done almost a month or two months back. Great. But, uh, so, know. what you say without a technical qualification like me, a regular chartered accountant can little bit of uh, AI can work on. I think AI. if I can do it, I think everybody can do it. You know, probably you need okay. help in the last mile of five percent, but I think you're good to go otherwise. That's up to you. That's up to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Over to you, Imanchu. Thank you, Ramajan, for uh, feedback. Yeah. Now, sure I would I like to call. Uh, yeah, please. Imanchu, reach here. Yes. 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 yes, yes. Okay. so um excellent presentation anmol thank you um just uh, one thing i want to ask you about this is uh, you have mentioned deep seek also is something which you have used right right so with the latest uh, developments in that particular area in terms of how uh, it's uh, handling the privacy or the confidentiality what's your take on that uh, using such kind of a tool i think op- using open ai and turning off the train model and actually i have i have emailed them uh, so that i need a nda from them so with open ai i am pretty comfortable with say microsoft you know back product and everything but deep seek i don't currently put in any kind of confidential data i just generate my codes from there because i don't have any kind of currently we you know we don't have any kind of ndas which they can work with and everything so i think um, but rishi and amola i want to add some more points here you know uh, deep seek uh, gives their uh, beautiful uh, uh, models as a open source so there yeah. are some offline tools like uh, you know lm studio uh, gpt for all where the offline models even a distiller model maybe with a small 4 gb of ram in your pc uh, can yes. run a small distiller model with 8 billion parameters and of course you know i suggest rishi also or other accountants or other people who have joined this session maybe you can work on with an offline gpt like that and again it can be connected through apis within your own network and own application so that the privacy concerns could be answered you create That's your own it. server basically <laughs> Yes, yes. Not necessarily, you know. Even a small PC, it runs maybe a bit a uh, slower way. Yeah, over the speech. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's interesting. Yes. Ah, uh, and just I'd like to add one last thing uh, to the participants or the viewers of this particular stream as well to uh, keep ranking uh, the panelists over here. Ah, uh, I think the lines for voting are open. Ah, uh, up to five minutes after the last uh, speaker has uh, done with his presentation. Yes. Over to you, Himanshu. Thank you, Rishir, and uh, thank you, Ramajan, for. Uh, posting a wonderful questions on this use case now